And this is the Myers family here with resident of Collinwood. Welcome to our first podcast. We're going to be talking about Hell in a Cell 2020. Um, resident of Collinwood, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I mean, this this thing with WWE, you've written down a couple of things that you want to talk about, man. Um, so, you know, let, let's get started here. What do you have written down here for us? Well, what I really want to talk about with Hell in a Cell is how they've really not developed Roman Reigns' heel turn well. I mean, in my opinion, I don't feel they have. I mean, when you're partnering with someone, with Paul Heyman, you're you're basically making Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar. You don't want to make two people the exact same character. I agree. Um, when, When Roman turned heel, I think it was at Clash when they turned him heel. And he just comes in and spears everyone and he's like oh you're freaking a mask and all that and I mean it just wasn't developed at all normally when there's a heel turn you see signs of it you know you you see some indications of it like with Stone Cold Steve Austin you heard him say how desperate he was he was like oh I have to beat you rock I need to beat you more than anything in the world. But with this, you didn't get that. It, like, it just came out of nowhere. It did. And here's the thing. If you're going to agree with what you said, if you're going to have a heel turn, you want to build that heel turn, not just have it happen with the snap of your finger. Building the heel turn takes a lot of time. So you could have had the spear, him spear, you know, the fiend and uh, the other guy at Clash like he did. But then, you know, you have to follow it up with consistent week to week heel turn. And I would not have put him with Paul Heyman. You don't when you have Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar had Paul Heyman because Brock Lesnar did not want to be a mouthpiece. You want Roman Reigns to have that difference. You want him to be a mouthpiece. But at the same time, for the most part, his actions need to do the talking. I agree, man. I definitely agree. And they're they're trying to make him a badass, and it's just not working. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I know people are tired of me nitpicking everything on the channel. They're trying to make this guy a badass. It's just not working. I'm not buying it. Well, and here's the thing, too. that What's hard to buy about it is anytime you want to take something and say, oh, he's, he's the tribal chief, what are you really doing? You're basically making the heel turn a part of a joke. I mean, that's... There's no point to that. How are you trying to connect to your audience and say, oh, he's the tribal chief? What the hell does that even mean? You know, how many of your audience members honestly know what you're trying to say there? You don't I, need I agree that. With you. I agree with you because I sure as hell don't. I like and I'm not even trying to sound racially insensitive, but I don't know anything about uh, Samoan culture. So I don't know. So again, like you said, well, what, what, what is a tribal chief? What is that? You're just going to assume that everyone knows what that is. So I, I don't, I don't know what a tribal chief is, bro. I mean, you, they, you, you lost me on that one. <laughs> I don't either, and that's the thing too. It, it's one thing to have him feud with a family member at. at and have make them have another match at Hell in the Cell. Okay, well, you have this match, but you have no... Other than it's for a title, for a prop, basically, there's no real layered substance. I mean, Roman Reigns is heel turn. If you're going to have Roman Reigns be heel, have him attack the biggest babyface in the locker room and keep attacking random babyfaces. 
and and make him show that locker room he owns it he owns it no one else and that's how you establish him as a badass week by week by week i agree with you man i i don't know i just i'm not feeling this build up with roman reigns if this were 2012 I'd be right there because Roman Reigns was a badass in 2012. You know, he came in as a badass, how he was talking trash. I forgot who he was fighting, but he was like, get up, old man. Get up, old man. Now, that was badass. But but this, like, I don't know. What is this? Like, I, I just don't get it, bro. I don't get it. It's it's not working for me. And here's the thing, too. If you're really going to put him with a manager, why is every manager need to be a man? Okay, why do we need Paul Heyman? You have these lovely girls, these beautiful women, and a lot of them know how to kick ass, too. Why not put him and Sasha Banks together, have two hard asses together? That way, when someone, you know, does get the upper hand on a Roman, you can have a woman literally sucker punch a man and get the fuck away with it. Yeah, for or either, even, even Stephanie McMahon. Like, do right. something like that. Right. I I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm just not feeling this this Roman Reigns thing. I'm not buying it. I'm not trying to be nitpicky. I'm just not buying it. Um, it, it sort of reminds me of true crime. I said, I was just saying this when I was watching a true crime video. I said, if you're going to accuse somebody of, of, uh, killing someone, there has to be a sign that they've killed before. Nobody just does something bad out of nowhere. Most of the time, when they do something bad, there is a history of it. You know what I mean? So for Roman to do this, there there has to be some sort of history of him doing it before. And you could argue that he that he turned heel in 2012. I mean, well, he didn't turn heel. He was already heel. You could argue that he was heel in 2012. But as far as this storyline is concerned, they're not acknowledging the 2012 heel run. They're basically saying that this guy was a babyface. He was John Cena 2.0, and then suddenly he just becomes Michael Myers out of nowhere and, and just starts wrecking everyone. I'm glad you use that ana analogy because here's the difference too. Myers is built up. They when and again, it's a perfect example. They didn't build this up. They just snapped their fingers. Okay, now you're a heel. Well, it doesn't always work that way. Uh, I mean, there's no when you have a heel turn and you want it to be a real surprise. Well, why didn't you have a six man tag with let's say the Usos and, you know, three other teams that were bad and have him turn on them there. I that agree, was... and I was going to say that. Right. I totally agree. Like, maybe he could, maybe it could be um, Roman and the Usos versus, uh, I don't know, The Bar and Sheamus. Wait, Sheamus is part of The Bar. I mean, it could be like The Bar and Robert Rude. Right. And then maybe um, Roman hits one of the Usos. He super punches them, and then he spears the other one. And then he's like, I'm tired of picking up your slack. I've been picking up your slack for years. Yep. And I'm tired of this. You know how they talk, you know. And it would make perfect sense. We would say, oh, wow. You know, he, he, he's upset, you know, he, cause he's been dealing with them for years. Same thing with Kurt Angle. 
Kurt Angle, you could see his heel turn in 2001 after they just beat the Alliance. After, um, you know, they were getting ready to fight the Alliance to see who would win, WWE or the Alliance. You could see Kurt turning heel. He was starting to resent, you know, uh, the fact that Rock was getting all this attention, all this attention just like Chris Jericho. You could see Chris Jericho slowly turning heel. He said, you know what, Rock? I'm tired of you getting all this attention. I'm tired of the people's eyebrow. I'm tired of the people's elbow. And if the people don't understand, I'm sick of the people. That's what he literally said. You could see him turning heel. But with this, they just pulled the trigger on it, and it just didn't make any sense, bro. No kind of sense. What hurts, too, is, and I don't think this is all Roman's fault. I just think it's the way it's written, and he's just miserable with it. He's not selling it with his body language, either. I agree. And when, when like you mentioned, when The Rock, when Angle, when Jericho, when they made their heel, heel turns, and when they made, they spoke, before one word came out of their mouth, they spoke with their body perfectly. Mm-hmm. You could tell venom was about to spew out of them and that's what you need to see with roman reigns and again i don't hold that against roman i hold that against the writers who are just giving him shit pure right. shit it's just it's horrible like i said with chris jericho with kurt angle but more with chris jericho you could see the jealousy you could see that he was tired of Rock's shit, you know. I'm tired of you being the star. Why does it always have to be about you? Everybody's ignoring me. And it's all about the people's eyebrow and the people's elbow and the people's this and the people's that. And, but with this, it, it just it, it came out of nowhere. So, so who, who are yeah. you going to? Who are you picking, or Roman Reigns or Jey Uso? Um, that's a good question. I am going to pick. I'm gonna pick Roman. I wanted to pick Jay, but I'm gonna pick Roman because they're gonna keep this heel turn going. And now I'm even hearing that they're saying, "Oh, well, he's not fully heel. He he's more like a a tweener." So it's like real events. Really, he's a tweet. You, you're that afraid of sponsors, bro. What is going on? Really, now you don't have heels anymore. Oh well, let's not say he's a heel. Let's not call him that. This is not good, man. This is, and you know, then the next topic you have here, you say. Uh, do I think Rock will show up down the road? Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. What are your thoughts about the Rock coming back to stop the evil Roman Reigns? I think if it happens, it'll happen more towards WrestleMania. Not now. Not at the end of the year. Because I just think there's, again, they haven't really built him up as a heel. And they haven't. I mean, if you're, look... If Rock is even giving this the light of day and paying attention to it, then he knows this. And that's sort of my worry, too, is are they going to be able to lure? I mean, because we've talked about this, you and I. The WWE needs The Rock. The Rock does not need WWE. That's true. I mean, it, it's I, – I put it this way. Dwayne Johnson – is the person, and The Rock is just the character that he plays. The Rock is Dwayne Johnson's foundation. The Rock is, you know, Dwayne Johnson's claim to fame. That that was his springboard into fame. So, in a way, yes, I guess he does need the character, because without that Rock character, Dwayne wouldn't be where he is, no question about it. I'm not minimizing what he's doing now in Hollywood. But there's no question that without that rock character, 
Dwayne wouldn't be who he is today. Um, as far as him coming back, again, they, they're not building it up. This is my frustration, man. They're, they're not building this thing up with the whole family thing. If you want to do the whole Samoan thing, the whole family thing, you're not building it up. That's my thing. So you're telling me the Rock's just going to show up out of nowhere? You know? Yeah, I, I do think that's sort of the, pro the problem with their storyline right now. They don't, again, lack of build with this. And, and I think, honestly, the, the writers are more banking on maybe, I don't know if Vince gave them the promise of The Rock or who maybe he did or didn't. I don't know that. But it's like this, if you gave that promise and the writers are write, writing it this bad to where it's just Roman isn't even selling it with his body of being a heel, how can you honestly sit there and say you're going to have The Rock? It, and that's that's the problem too. I agree. Um, I think what they're doing, and I, I say this online all the time when I comment on videos, um, they're playing the spaghetti game. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if you guys do it, but in my family, a way to tell if the spaghetti were done, you would take one noodle and throw it against the wall. And if it's stuck, it's done. So that's what they're doing here. They're basically taking a bunch of shit, throwing it against the wall to see what sticks. To see what works. Okay, this is not working. Let's try this. Let's make up this random uh, um, stable called Retribution. Okay, that's not working. Let's try this. Let's let the Fiend and Alexa Bliss uh, possibly get married later on. Which, which brings us to your next topic where you say, Is the Fiend... Um, you, you say something about The Fiend being on Raw, and will he or someone else interfere with Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton's match? Um, I don't know, man. What do you think? I think, yes. I think somebody will interfere in that match, whether it be him or someone else. I think they're, again, they brought him over to Raw for a reason. At least, I'd like to think the writers aren't that lazy. And, <laughs> but then again, you know, it, that's another problem, too. You have this draft that you, you brought, you know, you swap talent somewhat, and now you have to use that talent. Well, you can't be lost on that fact, so you got to use them somewhere. So my guess would be to have The Fiend interfere with, well, Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton because you know, why wouldn't you have him in the title picture? But though too, for me, if if I were having a draft, which I hate, I, why why is the Fiend a character who you've built as supernatural even even a part of a draft? He should be going. He should be the equivalent of Michael Myers everywhere and nowhere at the same goddamn time. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I totally agree with you. And uh, and then you you said that you wanted to talk about Sasha Banks and Bailey. Bro, this now this is the way you build the feud right here. Because they have been teasing a heel turn since like 2018 or 19. They've been built they've been teasing a um break up between these guys. What do you think about this? I like the way they actually did build this. I agree with you. They did build this correctly. But what I'd love to see is, again, I think at times with Bailey, she, Bailey to me was a better baby face. She is a believable heel, I think. But I just think Sa Sasha Banks is the better personality. And that's sort of what comes across when I watch them. They're both good, don't get me wrong. 
I just feel Sasha Banks is the better personality, and they should go with her. So I'm going to take Sasha Banks to win this, win the match, and win the title. But I do like what they've done with this. This was act- I give the writers credit. I don't know what the hell the difference was here than with Roman Reigns, but they did do a good job with this. I agree, man. I definitely agree. Um, I think you also uh, you also mentioned the whole thing with the Mysterio family about that. Um, the the Monday Night Messiah thing. Um, I I personally wouldn't go there because there are a lot of religious people out there. Um, I think that's a little insensitive of WWE on their part, but at the same time, I could understand why they would do it. He's like a cult leader. Um, the, the one thing I don't like, though, is that he only has one member in his cult. If, if they were going to do a cult angle, they should have had many members in the cult. You know, maybe they could have had Aaliyah in the cult, and they could have had Murphy and um, some other people. What do you think about this whole Messiah, this whole cult thing that they're doing with Seth Rollins? My problem with the Seth Rollins character isn't so much Seth Rollins. It's the fact that they've given him too many gimmicks. They've given yeah. him the the Monday Night Messiah. They've given him the Architect, the King Slayer. He's been so many different names. It's not even been funny. And it's like, well, pick one, pick one, and stick with one. What is he? Is he the if he's the Monday Night Messiah? I agree with you. If he has a cult, well, where the hell is the rest of it? Because it's not there. And it's just, it, it's to the point of okay, if he's if he's a cult leader. What the hell is so scary about him? Nothing. And that's a problem too. You, you are not, you're not registering the fear of the leader for that cult. That's another problem too. Right. And that's the thing. If, even if he wasn't scary, you could make the argument that he could still be a cult leader because it says that Satan would present himself as an angel of light. So, okay, if he's not downright scary... Can you at least uh, make him spew this propaganda that's enticing to people, that makes people want to buy into this whole cult thing? Um, And he only has one disciple. Like, it's just not making sense. Um, uh, I hope they build it up if they're going to keep going with it. Um... Do you have any last words before we look at the match cards and do our pick? For each yeah, one? I just I agree with what you're saying about you know he could do it through. He doesn't necessarily have to be you know fearful. And, and here's what I'll add to that too: if you're going to have him spew pop propaganda, spew public propaganda, do it publicly in front of a large crowd or what looks like a large crowd. I agree. <laughs> That's something they could have did easily, you know, even with the pandemic. They could have did it where he's like, looks like on television like he is now and just, you know, I am your Messiah. That's something you could easily do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I but, agree. I agree, man. Um, I think they should have really built this thing up and it's just something they're not doing and we just keep coming back to that they're not doing it and that's what's really um that's what really has me going here and it's a shame that we haven't come up with a name yet we will by the time next week comes um but i want to thank you guys for listening we're going to do our picks now do you have do you have the card or uh i have some of the card here okay there's the Roman. We picked Roman Reigns and uh, mm-hmm. Jay. So, who are you taking between 
uh, Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. Um, wow. WWE could swerve us and give it to Randy Orton. I mean, there's no question that they want to. They want suspense. They want the audience back. Um, so they could pick Randy. I'm going to go with Drew because Drew is the safe bet, you know, and I think they want to play it safe right now, but they might swerve us. Who are you going to go with? I'm going to cheat and say there is going to be, this is going to end in a no contest. I honestly think there's not going to be a winner. Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Who do we have next on the card that you have? Um, There is... Who are you picking between Sasha Banks and Bailey? Okay. Um, this is a hard one, and I'll tell you why. Because if, you know, they could end it here, or they could keep it going until WrestleMania, I'm going to have to say... Um, I'm going to pick Bailey because I'm going to assume that they're going to keep this thing going. How about you? I like the way they built this field. We've talked the feud. We've talked about that. Yeah. I'm, ho- I'm hoping the payoff is a bit tonight and they could always rematch it. So I'm hope I'm going to go Sasha. I'm going to go the other way. Yeah. Um, they, they've been building this thing since like 2000. Um, 17, 18, like they really built this thing up well. Now, this is how you build a good feud. I like this one. Um, so who else do you, who else do you have? Well, can I ask you something real quick before we Yeah, continue? go ahead. You can ask me anything, bro. What do you think the difference is between the writing style with this feud, this build up feud, Sasha and Bailey, and the way Roman Reigns? has been just recklessly turned heel? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this feud was started by a writer that's been there for a while, and then maybe he or she was let go. Because if you remember back in April, they had a day called Black Wednesday, where everybody was just released out of nowhere. So maybe this came from a writer that had been letting this feud simmer for a bit, and then maybe he or she was fired on Black Wednesday, you know, and they just kept going with it. And then the Roman Reigns feud was just poorly written by a new writer, you know? I mean, that's something that that could have been. Maybe it was just different writers. Yeah, that could be. I mean, that's a possibility. Who do you got? Who do you think is going to win between Kevin Owens and Alistair Black? Um, hmm. Well, I don't really see Alistair Black being a main event player. I don't see him being at the top of the card. He's more like mid card. So I'm going to go with Kevin Owens on this one. And for the last one I have, it's Dominic Mysterio versus Seth Rollins. And they're questioning here whether Murphy is on Dominic's side or not. So, uh, Well, one, one of the storyline theories that I heard going around is that uh, they want to bring um, Aaliyah into the cult. I don't know if you knew about that, but that's one of the theories going around is that they want to they wanna possibly use Murphy being beat up by Seth Rollins as a ruse to get Aaliyah to feel sorry for Murphy and then possibly join the cult. Uh, Murphy talks her into joining and she joins because she's a bit naive. That's the way they have the character presented. What do you think about that? I would have Aaliyah join the cult. Not how they have it, if that's the case, but not I would have her join the cult. I would have her fake like she's going to kiss Murphy and just kick him right in the balls and kiss Seth Rollins. Wow. 
He's the leader. Bro, that that's so um that's so cool. Although I think they said Murphy is in on it. So but if oh. he's not in on it, if he's not in on it, your idea would be great. And I love bro, I freaking love the idea that you have where Seth Rollins takes over the WWE world. That's so freaking creepy. Um and like I said, I don't I don't like the whole Bible thing because you know I'm very religious. I don't like that. But the fact that you have the devil um, pretending to be Jesus, presenting himself as Jesus, I, I think that's so creepy because they're basically making him the devil. You know, he's pure evil, as you heard them say. And um, I think that's really creepy what you have going on where you said, well, he could do this speech in front of an entire audience and they're just mesmerized by his satanic propaganda. Like, that's really creepy. I would literally have him have his own congregational church do this in a church that is gonna... so bro that that's so freaking creepy oh man like i i don't even know what to i don't even know what to say about that that's so you're and that just goes to show um ladies and gentlemen if you guys don't know you might want to subscribe to resident of collinwood he's an excellent writer and what you're hearing right here, his idea was Seth Rollins basically convincing the world that he is the savior, like when he's actually the devil. That's that's really I don't even know what like that that's I don't know, man. I, I don't know what to say. Cause that sounds like some sort of Charles Manson type um thing that they got going on there man um wow i i hope i hope wwe pulls the trigger on that one because that's really that's really creepy it would creep me out and here's the thing seth rollins could could easily pull this off i mean he could start talking softly about how he'll guide everybody and it, he's talking normal and normal and each week each and every week you're thinking oh this guy's okay and then there's the underlying tones of when you commit to me, you commit to no one else, not God, not Jesus. I mean, you literally got to mention this shit to get it across. Um, I think WWE would like I think they're afraid to offend people. So even if you didn't mention it directly, there could be some underlying themes of it, which is what they tried to do with CM Punk. And uh, personally, I think Seth is doing a better job. Like I said, I I can't describe it any other way except creepy. Um, I, I don't know how else to describe it. I really don't. What's it's something just, you... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, say it again? I said, what's something you want to see change between Raw and SmackDown? Uh, I just want edgier content, man. I mean, that's that's all I can say. And as you said, it's not about the rating. It's how they use them. They're yeah. not using them right. If you're really worried about, we talked about this, if you're worried about sponsorship, go to the get off television and go somewhere else. Go to Netflix because your viewers should be paying for your product, not your sponsorship. Your viewership should be paying for you, not, not your sponsors, not Skittles, not Snickers. Your audience pays for you. Who buys and, that ticket? The audience. The You're right, and that's the thing. If Skittles is sponsoring you, they're not going to want to be associated with this. No. Not anymore. No. If this were 2000, they might have done it. 
But nowadays, they can't afford to take that risk. So, um, I don't know, man. I agree. I enjoyed doing this episode with you. We plan on doing this every week, guys. Please subscribe to Resident of Collinwood. His link is in the description box. He's a great writer. You know, he's going to leave all his information there for you guys to read, you know, and the links will be down below. Resident of Collinwood, I want to thank you for being on with me tonight with our first WWE podcast. Man, th this has been great. Thank you for having me on. I look forward to doing this. All right, man. And by the way, like I told you earlier, I'll tell the people now, guys, I subscribe. I unsubscribed, I should say, from cable television. It was just way too expensive. Um, I, I do watch it on Hulu. So, I mean, unfortunately, we're going to have to do these episodes a day after said show because I unsubscribed from cable. So I cannot watch raw on Monday nights. Um, and I've talked to resident of Collinwood about this already. And as far as Friday nights, I'm busy that night. So I cannot watch SmackDown either. So we are going to have to do it a day after each show. Um, including the pay-per-views. And once again, I want to thank you for being here. You offered great insight. I can't wait to do next week's episode. Um, Rock was supposed to come back at Hell in a Cell, but they moved it to December, allegedly. So, oh well. If, if, you, were, if you were Dwayne Johnson and, and seeing the product as it is, would you come back? Um, if you want my honest opinion, yes, because I feel bad for WWE. Okay. I, I honestly do. I feel bad for WWE. One time they actually got 800,000 viewers on SmackDown. <laughs> That's not even a million. They got 800,000 viewers that night. I was one of them, probably. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, it's it's really bad, bro. It's in bad shape right now at this point. Um, but anyway, I want to thank you for being here, and uh, I hope they tune into the next episode. Don't worry, guys. We'll come up with a name. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. All right, I'll talk to you later.